Welcome once again to Beside the Burn. This is our daily devotional from Burnside Presbyterian Church. And uh, it's lovely that you're able to join with us day by day as we study God's word together. The idea is that on Sunday we uh, approach God's word, we uh, read and study together, we worship. And then uh, throughout the week we take the opportunity uh, to delve a little bit deeper into some of the areas that we didn't have time to look at on Sunday. So all this week we're looking at that passage from the end of Acts chapter 2, which is all about the church and describing to us how the early church met together and what they did whenever they came together. And the plan is that we can see in a similar way how we can meet before the Lord and how we can worship the Lord together. So we're going to be looking together at at what we read in Acts 2. And today we're looking at Acts 2 and verse 43. We've already been told how the uh, church were coming together at the breaking of bread to have fellowship uh, together. And here in verse 43 we read, Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And this is what has been happening since the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. Everyone was filled with awe and uh, at the many wonders and signs. And these wonders and signs are being performed by the apostles. And the idea here is that as the apostles go about and they perform these miracles, then everyone is amazed at what they have done And it turns their attention to God and they look beyond the apostles and they look beyond the wonders and signs and they see the apostles. Now, or or, or they see God. And this is not just on the day of Pentecost, but this then continues. Just as Jesus performed miracles, so the apostles are doing the same and God is using this opportunity to authenticate what they're doing. And we'll come back to that in a moment or two because we've already been reading a passage about that in Acts about Jesus Christ. But if we look ahead a couple of chapters to chapter 5 of Acts and verse 12, there again we're reading about the apostles doing the very same thing. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colony. So the apostles continue to perform these signs and wonders. They continue to do God's work and they continue to show that they are genuine about God's work by the miracles that they do. And this makes us think of earlier on in chapter 2 when Peter is explaining what happened on the day of Pentecost, and he starts to tell the people about Jesus. This is what Peter says about Jesus, Acts 2.22. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. The wonders and the signs and the miracles are used by God to show that the person who is performing them has been accepted and authorised or accredited, as we read here, by God himself. So the miracles and wonders and signs that the apostles do show that they are serving God and that they are doing God's will. It's the same, Peter says, as what happened with Jesus because of the miracles and wonders and signs that he performed. And he reminded the people that these were not just fairy tales that had been told about Jesus, that they had witnessed many of them themselves. And that meant that Jesus had been sent by God and was doing God's work. So throughout the book of Acts, whenever we see the apostles doing these incredible things, we realise that God is at work. We realise that the Holy Spirit is at work. 
and we've already seen the tongues of fire and the wind coming and the languages being spoken on the day of Pentecost, all pointing towards God and authenticating what has been happening. And that means that today we can trust God. We can trust in the Holy Spirit. We can trust in what Jesus Christ has done for us. We're not just believing fairy tales or nicely made up stories. We are trusting in one who has been approved by God. We're trusting in one who is trustworthy and accepting of our trust. So, Today, as we live our lives, as we seek to be going about doing our daily jobs, we can remember that we have one who is special that we're following. One who is able to do miracles. One who is able to perform wondrous signs. One who can be trusted. And we can trust in Jesus Christ. And therefore, as we read throughout this book and we see what the apostles are doing, we continually find examples of what Jesus is doing. So uh, let's give thanks today that God does not just send his son to get on with things himself, but he authorizes him and approves him. The apostles are not just sent out on their own to try and tell people the good news. They have been authorised and accredited by God. And so as we see these signs, our attention is drawn to God and we trust in him. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to tell us the good news. We thank you, Lord, for the apostles and for all of their teaching to the early church and how the church grew in number uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for all these signs and wonders that prove to us who the apostles are, that prove to us who Jesus is. Lord, help us to trust in you and help us to glorify your name. For Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.